organizers, president, BC, Pro BC, other academicians, researcher. Today, my topic is Women Entrepreneurs in India, a paradigm shift from grassroots to global. Women's socioeconomic role goes unrecognized in India. Most women work as unpaid caregivers, household managers, or in other home-based positions. Only a minority work outside the house. While women are better educated and enjoy improved healthcare than before, they continue to face structural, social, and economic barriers to paid employment that limit women's individual economic advancement and constraints Indian social and economic progress. Women's potential remain as an untapped resource in the country. Women are generally considered as homemakers and do not have much knowledge about economy or commerce. But this concept is changing. In modern India, the educated women do not want to confine themselves in the poor walls of the house they want equal respect for their patterns. So more and more women are involved in entrepreneurial activity, especially in medium and social and small scale enterprise. Despite significant strides, Indian's growth study has ignored women. The World Bank estimates that 70% of working age women, that means 30% of the India's working age population currently do not have paid work only 59% of women have access to mobile phones with an assembly, low internet penetration rate of 90%, and only 30% of the women actively use their bank accounts further, limiting their opportunities. Finally, although women represents 42% of the agricultural labor forces in India, women own just 2% of farmland. land. The Indian women today has not only employed in the corporate world, but they are moving beyond a corporate career and into entrepreneurship. A corporate career gives her the financial independence, but being an entrepreneur, she can get all opportunity to be not for herself, but can prove herself different from others. Mm -hmm. Women contribute to around 60 to 80% of unpaid domestic work in developing nations Earlier for women, there are three cases, kitchen, kids, knitting, and then came three P's, powder, purple, pickles, and now at present there are five E's, electricity, electronics, energy, engineering, and entrepreneurship. Indian women are becoming more visible and successful in all spheres. Women are involved in business for survival, and to showcase their hidden talents and creativity and to prove their capabilities in bringing the social transformation. Today, many women have established their own empire and are ruling the world according to their wish, the hidden entrepreneurial potentials, skill, knowledge, and the arts to do something different uh, in the regions of women to involve in business activities, which may lead to development of the nation as a whole. Indian government and the planning commission recognizes that women play an important role in the economic development. Where do women owned enterprises stand today? Mm -hmm. According to a report by Google and Brain and Company, 13.5 to 15.7 million women owned enterprises make up about 20% of all the enterprises present in the country today. This is a 6% rise from the 14% in the last decade having overcome several constraints that stand in the way of women entrepreneurs, restricting them from reaching their full potential. If accelerated to meet its full quality and quantity, women entrepreneurship can create about 30 million women-owned enterprises and potentially transform the employment milieu of the country with 150 to 170 million new jobs, according to the study. Why women entrepreneurship from increasing longevity to women in the workforce to gender sensitivity innovation from enhancing pay parity and productivity to elevation of the poverty and expansion of the country's economy. Investing in women builds economic and social prosperity mm -hmm. by enabling a gradual social shift from high fertility, low education and poor health 
to making more conscious reproductive choices higher education and better health for self and family noted the report leveling the playing field and supporting women start even small scale enterprises can help in accelerating overall female entrepreneurship when women become active contributors in the workforce they invest not only in their families their home but also the communities which helps in leading measurable impact the way forward mm -hmm. ultimately for any venture to take up one of the most important factors is available capital when investors are claiming that they invest in ideas statistically speaking a square pattern has been observed when it comes to capital funding for women led starts up and businesses having said that however new firms are now taking the mantle by betting on great ideas without letting gender affect their judgment from global millennium venture capital firms like esogal ventures to shaha fund the tide is changing with available funding for women entrepreneurs apart from this having mentorship goes a long way in building and growing networks having the right help in articulating their ambitions or learning how to promote and negotiate can help women entrepreneurs in understanding the gaps within their skill sets in india there are mentorship and skill training initiatives that include finance and skill development programs led by the foundation like mandashi that has infused about an aggregate of 500 crores to almost 90000 women entrepreneurs in rural areas another program outment program out mentioning is TIE Global's All India Roadshow for Women's Economic Empowerment through Entrepreneurship that looks at promoting entrepreneurship amongst women in tier 2 and tier 3 cities in India. A collective effort by the government and voluntary agencies is what is necessary to be able to harness the unrecognized and unaccounted for strength in women-led enterprises. by integrating them into the process of industrial development hello can be especially added small scale industry development in the country as per the fourth all india census of msme the number of women enterprises in the registered sector are 2.15 lakhs that is 13.72% and unregistered sector are 18.06 lakhs that is 9.09% of the total sectors This figure clearly shows the number of women enterprises that are under the unregistered sector. This indicates that many women enterprises start up their enterprises if the government makes policies for unregistered sector where more benefits can be reaped by women entrepreneurs. That could get more opportunities and benefits if if they come under registered sector. Few countries, because of the size and population, are poised. to benefit from equality especially india where currently only 25% of the labor force is female however their contribution to domestic gdp is only 17% less than half the global average according to the world bank doubling the percentage of women in the workforce would boost india's growth rate from 7.5 to 9% and rise the country's gdp to us dollar 700 billion by 2025 impressive as much as us an increase would be there is more to be gained if we add women business owners to the conversation in the c suite of corporations in india and around the world according to a 2019 survey conducted by the reserve bank of india only about 14% of all micro small and medium enterprises in india are majorly owned by women and only 5.9% of all startup are led solely by women and while gender disparity is still many years away even a modest increase in india would reap benefits well beyond gdp figures this is the women entrepreneurship in india that has been shown here tamil nadu uttar pradesh kerala punjab maharashtra gujarat karnataka madhya pradesh other states and indian territory it is 57452 number this is registered and number of women entrepreneurs it is 18848 and percentage it is 30.82
Uh, women labor force participate rate that is LAPR in India already among the lowest in the world continues to decline. The de decline of working women between the ages of 15 to 24 may be partially attributable to an increased focus on education. However, the secular decline and recent stagnation in participation rates for women between 25 and 64 is alarming. So if we see we can see UK, Russia, China, US, Ghana, Brazil, Indonesia, Philippines, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Egypt, Pakistan, India, Iran, Jordan, uh, Iran, Iraq. So we can see the position of the India, it is in the lowest position. Then in poor company, India versus rest of the world, female participation rate in labor force. That shows high income, low income countries, middle income countries, European Union countries, least developed countries, world average, heavily indebted, poor countries, fragile and conflict affected situations, Afghanistan, Somalia, Pakistan, India, Arab wars, West Bank of uh, Bank and Gaza, Iran. So here we can see that the position of the India is very low. Game changing employment creation. It is well known that macro, small, and medium enterprise MSMSE are key to long term employment creation. Regions and industries in India that have interest, entrepreneurship have grown faster and created more jobs. When provided with equal access to inputs, women owned enterprise produce equally strong economic outcomes when compared to other weak. Enterprises led by men. Entrepreneurship will enable women to play a pivotal rather than a peripheral role in the economic sphere. Women are more likely to hire other women and are less influenced by gender stereotypes. When provided with equal access to inputs, women owned enterprises produce equally strong economic outcomes when compared with enterprises led by men. This uh, disproportionate social outcomes enabling women entrepreneurship benefits future generations through the multiple effect. According to the International Monetary Fund, IMFF investing, investing in women builds economic and social prosperity by enabling a gradual social, social shift from high fertility, low education, and poor health to making more conscious reproductive choices, higher education, and better health for self and family. Mm -hmm. Women's employment contributes to outsized social returns as women invest most of their income on children's health and education, benefiting future generation. Improved personal outcomes with greater longevity in the workforce as women entrepreneurs experience greater financial independence, autonomy, and control it leads to an increased retention of women in the workforce. About 59% of the women believe working for themselves reduces the, their dependence on a spouse or family, while 46% view it as a means to break through the glass ceiling. The current state, India has more women-owned enterprises than many other countries with an estimated 13.5 million to 15.7 million MSME, MSME and Agri business, as per published sources, a closure loop reveals the need for a multi set push to improve women's in involvement across this business. Women owned enterprises are growing over the past decade. Women owned enterprises have increased from 14 to 20 percent as per government sources. This is with the help of national and state government, investors, banks, financial, and educational institutions, and most of all, the enterprises, female. Uh, female uh, workforce. India still faces a large gap compared with peers. As for the Global Entrepreneurship and Development Institute 2015, India performs below the 20th percentile in the female entrepreneurship index. This is far below developed markets such as the US, UK, and developing markets such as Brazil, Russia, and Nigeria. Women owned enterprise in India are largely single person enterprise. This translates to lower returns and employment only 70% to all women owned enterprises employed hired workers versus 28% for all enterprises. True entrepreneurship among women is over represented in number to provide economic independence to women. Enterprises need to be owned, controlled, or run by women. Surveys across parts of India suggest that 10 to 30% women 
after not run by omen according to enterprises disguised as omen on enterprises brain analysis <coughs> suggests that the total share of enterprises that are truly owned and run by omen is likely to be lower than 20% Full, full potential opportunities, domain entrepreneurship direct, directly affects income, employment, and capital formation while indirectly benefiting household level resource allocation. Supporting women entrepreneurs not only proves their livelihood but also creates jobs. Research studies suggest that an ambition yet realistic push can be enabled India to achieve a significant contribution from women and women. Through direct, indirect, and induced employment alone, there are an estimated 13.5 million to 15.7 million on women owned and controlled enterprises are creating direct employment for 22 million to 27 million people in India. In addition to the employees hired directly, this enterprise supports indirect employment by creating demand for suppliers and other parties in the value chain. Additionally, there is induced. Employment because of increased consumption by people getting directly and indirectly employed. As all states effort to help women start and skill generate can improve can employment for 150 million to 170 million people. There are several examples of countries some in similar stages of development as India and states within India that have. Structurally enabled and accelerated entrepreneurship among women. Examples include developed countries such as the U.S. and Canada that have 40% enterprises owned by women, and developing countries such as Indonesia, Vietnam, and Russia that have over 30% women-owned enterprise. Within India, several states, including Meghalaya, Mizoram, Manipur, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, lead in representing of women in the MSME sector, and all states support that is. Focused on enabling women entrepreneurs to start up and skill club skill could by 2030 increase direct employment by around 50 million to 60 million people and increase indirect to and induced employment of another 100 million to 110 million people. This figure shows women-owned enterprises can generate over 50 to 60 million direct jobs by 2000, 2030. That shows here direct em employment by women-owned enterprise 2016. Impact of increase in women-owned enterprise without hard workers. Impact of increase in women-owned enterprise with hard workers. Impact of increase in scale of women-owned enterprises 2030 full potential. In 2017, the Banasthali Vidyapeet launched its own auto innovation center AIC with a women entrepreneur incubation program exclusively for women-led startup. This year, AIC is inviting application for its fourth cohort from women entrepreneurs all over the country. AIC Banasthali Open and Entrepreneur Program has grown to become one of the largest women-centric business incubators that has supported by supported over 75 women. Let startup out of which 60 are operational in the market. 20 have raised funding valued at rupees 43 crores and created around 1,100 jobs so far. The Apple Entrepreneur Entrepreneur Camp is help, helping women founders receive one on two one on one port level guidance on their app from Apple experts and engineers as well as mentorships, inspiration, and insights from top Apple leaders. Headquarters in Bengaluru, Raksharao Ran, Purajanna Creative Solution is one of such startup providing customized solution for interactive media, health, and music industry. The company primarily builds mobile applications on Apple platform. Research shows that female and black founders face unique challenges in technology, especially when starting and leading companies. The Apple Entrepreneurs Camp helps them form a global network that encourages the a pipeline and longevity of founders and develops all of all backgrounds. Top famous women entrepreneurs: uh, Aditi Gupta, Menstrupedia, Anisha Singh. MyDollar.com, Sarada Sharma, Your Study, Upasana Taku, Mobik Week, Niru Sharma, Inki Bin, Suganda, Dr. Kyar, Malika Sadani, The Mom's Cow, 
Kadushigar, Benuel Luke, Ankita Gaba, Sushal Samosa, Oshe Ashokan, Magistrate Den, then Akakusha Ansu, Refund Me in Chitra Gurani Daga, Philippiam Com. Then Bandana Lutra, BLCC, Susi Mukaji, Line Road, Manshi Gupta, Tayari, Bonikala, Kalari Capital, then Nishaba, Godres, Godres Konjumar, Potters, Onkita, Boista, Shahakhan, Aditi, Avisti, Embai, then Gajal, Kalra, Ribijgo, then Monisha, Rai Singhani, Loginet, then Sri Lakshmi Suresh, he designed Aditi Gupta. As a, some famous women entrepreneurs who have not only proved their meta, mental in leading from the front, but also inspired many women across the globe to create the path and emerge as dynamic women entrepreneurs. Huh. Akansha huh. Garodia Goble, co founder of Remy Cosmetics, huh. Subhi Malik, and Megna Narayan, huh. Narayan co founders of Sroop Farm. Then Bhavna Juneja, co-founder at Empower, then Ankita Sheth, co-founder at Dista Rooms, then Aisha Chinoy, co-founder at Revinda, then Aruti Gil, co-founder at Ojiba, then Tonuja Gomez, co-founder at Fasta Dose School of Music, then Sundari Rangarajan, co-founder at Kali, then Rushi Singh, co-founder Your Dose. Ashni Ashokan is the founder and CEO of Mad Street Den, an artificial intelligence company powering retail distribution, healthcare, media, finance, and more with its image recognition platforms, BUI and Boxy.ai. The company is headquartered in the Bay Area, California, with offices across the globe, including Chennai, Bangalore, Tokyo, London, Dubai, and more. BUA.ai and BLXO.ai both works with <coughs> marquee retailers, trade media companies, and brand, brands across the globe, transforming operational through intelligent automation. Then Malika Sadani, the mom's firm, a passionate entrepreneur and a loving mother, and full of enthusiasm. Malika Das Sadani is the founder and CEO of the Momsco. Momsco one of the India's top century brands leading to babies, expectant and new mothers seeking natural and chemical free products for their daily personal care uh, regimen. The products are formulated and tested to make sure they meet every international safety standard that is across US, Canada, Europe, Japan, and Australia. The team works with the experts around the globe, and today it is the India's first Australian certified toxin free TM brand certified by the Safe Cosmetic Australian TM, a toxin free campaign. The product ranges are also MET Safe TM, Australian Allergy Certified TM, and dermatologically tested. Then Akamsha Ansu is a tech savvy, a visionary entrepreneur and founder of three successful ventures. She, she comes from an enterprise technology background, holds an engineering degree, and has managed various roles so far from IT services to business development from the international market. The Indian aviation sector witnessed the growth of the air passengers by 18.6% between January and December 2018, which carried almost 130. 0.9 million passengers to passengers as compared to 117.1 million in the year 2017. Evidently, the growth in the air passengers would motivate the growth of aircraft and that eventually bring new innovations and new challenges. With the number of air passengers are increasing, there is still a large segment of air travelers who are not fully aware of the air passengers' rights. The air passengers' rights were laid down by the DGCA uh, to benefit the travelers, but people are facing failing, taking advantage of these rights because of the lack of awareness and technically jargon incorporated in policies as well as the airline manuals. Refund me in India's first flight 
first ever flight compensation provider makes people aware of their passengers right and help them get the compensation mm -hmm. they are entitled to get in case of flight disruptions akansha anshu founded refunded me in 2016 that his basic purpose is upload travel information then checklist and reminder expense tracker delay prediction airport details uh, airline details and then cab booking then chitra ravi a management graduate chitra has a graduate a great passion for education chitra uh, deeply combines her skills in conceptualization, study uh, boarding, and instru instructional design to deliver products and services which are dynamic and on par with any international curriculum standard. Sitra has widely traveled to the United States, United Kingdom, Germany, and South East, and has uh, participated in many international training programs and, conven and uh, conventions including the Project Zero conducted by the Harvard University exclusively for educators. She has also presented a program on effective use of technology in K-12 curriculum for one of the biggest satellite channels in India. Then Mandana Lutra is an Indian inspirational entrepreneur who is the founder of VLCC Healthcare Limited. The company sells beauty products and wellness palmomerates. Palmo the company is uh, dispensing the Middle East, Africa, Asia, Europe. In 2014, she became chairperson of the beauty and wellness sector skills council that is not a profitable organization, but B and WSSC gets financial support from NSDC, which comes under the Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship. Then Aditi Balbir is the founder and CEO of the V Resort, all organization that provides holiday experiences that showcase the real India he research is all about introducing the harried Indian city dwellers to new and unexplored games, gems that are strewn all mm -hmm. around India. The company delivers these experiences by identifying, engaging, and managing even little resource hotels and BNBs that lie on the less between park to ensure their well renowned rounded experience for each travelers we resort takes complete responsibility of the delivering an authentic or local uh, ground on ground customer experience every single time she she set the platform by uh, spearheading two successive round of uh, dollar <coughs> dollar nine million funding raised from known vc investors such as bedrocks and sit fund RB investors, our contribution to the research has been all encompassing, having built in the business from ground up and take a task being to carefully curate, develop, and manage unique research properties in India. Currently, the research offers a size of over 80 plus unique experiences in upbeat destination across, across 60 states in India, is offering something local yet maintaining a global standard of services level. Then Rashmi is the co-founder of the CEO of SlideShare. She is an Indian internet entrepreneur. SlideShare is the world's largest community for individuals and organizations to share their presentations. Today, SlideShare receives more than 32 million unique visits in a month. Then it can be conclusion. It can be said that today we are in a better position. Hiring women in participation in the field of entrepreneurship is increasing at a considerable rate. Women sector are occupies nearly 45% of the Indian population at this juncture. Effective steps are needed to provide entrepreneurial awareness, orientation, and skill development programs to women. The role of women entrepreneurs in economic development is also being recognized. The steps are being taken to promote women entrepreneurship. Women entrepreneurship was a neglected domain during the past, but with the spread of the education and awareness among the women, the picture has been changed and the women have emerged as a today's most memorable and inspirational entrepreneurs. Global evidence shows that women have been performing exceedingly well in a uh, plethora of spheres like academics, politics, administration, social work, and so on. Plunging into the industry and running successful business <coughs> enterprises was the consequential next step for changing the economic and social trajectory of the country for generations of women 
to come. The Nomen setting examples and inspiration for their tribe to achieve heights personally and professionally should be proud, celebrated, celebrated with all narratives shaping and changing in favor of female inter empowerment. The numbers of female entrepreneurs have increased. Leaders on global level admire them for their hard work and contributions. Their significant work only delivers bigger and better results. Thank you all. Thank you.